Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the program today, Zambia's improving economic growth gets modest ratings note from S&P. Kenya's central bank extends sale of five-year treasury bond. Plus, Stenop's African listing overshadowed by Europe woes. Let's get started now. We're starting off with the markets and uh, both the Nigerian stock market and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange were down at intraday today, 0.14% and 0.71% each. However, the market in Egypt, the EGX30 index, was up 1.21%. In the meantime, Nairobi stock market closed in the green 0.67% on Monday. And in the Middle East, most Gulf stock markets traded narrowly today as many investors stayed away with the approach of Ida al Daha holidays beginning this week. But Qatar's boss dropped after Fitch cut the country's credit ratings. Fitch lowered Qatar by one notch to AA- minus, uh, with a negative outlook on Monday, citing the impact of sanctions on Doha imposed by other Arab states. That brought Fitch into line with the other two major rating agencies, Moody's and Standard & Poor's. The downgrade threatens higher funding costs for Qatari banks as they seek to replace deposits and loans that are being withdrawn by the other Arab states. Saudi Arabia's index was down 0.14% at intraday. In Dubai, the index edged down 0.06%, although GFH Financial, the most active stock, gained 1.7%. Dana Gas retreated 1.5% in Abu Dhabi, helping pull the index there down 0.52%. And in the U.S., uh, the stock index futures pointed to a mixed but lower open as uh, geopolitical concerns surrounding North Korea and the West were amplified following news that a missile had passed over Japan. Dow Jones Industrial Average fell uh, 107 points, while S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 futures tilted slightly upwards. And uh, looking at those um, numbers uh, there, the Dow Jones Industrial Average looking down 0.02%, S&P 500 up 0.05%, and NASDAQ 0.28%. And in Europe, markets were trading sharply lower in early trade today as geopolitical concerns surrounding North Korea raised fresh jitters across global markets. For details, my colleague in Frankfurt, Janelle Dumalon, joins me now. Hello, Janelle. Thank you very much for coming through to the program. Now, the euro is up at $1.20 against the U.S. dollar for the first time since 2015. That's after North Korea lobbed Three missiles over Japan on Monday. Stocks are melting while metal prices are climbing. Unpack this bloody Tuesday for us. Bloody Tuesday is a very good way to put it. Markets here are very anxious indeed. And, you know, markets can usually shrug off the, the saber rattling to come out of North Korea. But obviously this time around, the difference is that those missiles were, fire, were fired over Japan. And that just feels like something different uh, to investors here, uh, a new level. So as it happens, because they're worried, uh, the DAX is downcast. European shares uh, have seen a six-month low. And investors are flocking to safe haven assets like German bonds and gold. The gold price has, of course, spiked to its highest level since the start of the year. And um, this all indicates a very high level of, um, of risk aversion as geopolitical tensions rise at a time where the U.S. cannot be counted on to keep a steady hand. Now, let me tell you, investors here were practically glued to Twitter to see if Donald Trump would tweet anything about North Korea, anything that perhaps had the words uh, fear and fury on them. Now, of course, we've heard now official statements from the White House saying that all options are on the table. Investors are listening to this. They're not particularly comforted by this. As such, the risk-off sentiment will probably continue, as will the downward trend in markets. Now, Janelle, let's look across the Atlantic, a real humanitarian and economic disaster in Texas. How is this being factored into the CBOE volatility index 
popularly known as fear index, and that's uh, breaching 20% level now. Yes, uh, you're right about that. That so-called fear gauge on Wall Street is up. And Harvey does have something to do with that. But of course, it's also important to note that North Korea is driving up that spike as well. But uh, in terms of Harvey, we, we're seeing the stocks of insurance and oil companies fall. Uh, investors are still trying to assess the extent of uh, the damage that the catastrophe has wrought on the heart of U.S. oil refining capacities. As such, we're going to expect a lot of volatility, especially in the energy sector in the next days. Now, gasoline prices have already spiked. Oil has fallen as the demand for crude has been reduced since the refineries that would have needed those oil, uh, that crude oil, have been shuttered in the wake of the hurricane. Now, at this point, it's hard for investors to gauge just how much damage has been done to the economy. Floodwaters like these have never been seen before. It's also impossible to tell at this point when the thousands of employees who were ac evacuated out of the region will be able to return to work. And um, all this is contributing to the uncertainty, as are the forecasts that the rain is actually set to continue. Now let's look at the economic data front uh, now. It's the latest French consumer spending and, of course, Germany's consumer sentiment. What are the trigger points for these numbers? You know, that could be the bright spot in market news today. The GFK Consumer Index in Germany saw, um, saw a jump to 10.9 points. That's in line with analyst expectations. So sales of high-ticket items, including cars and furniture, were quite brisk in, um, in August. As it turns out, uh, Germans have never felt so confident about their economy since 2001. So Germany is actually reaping the benefits of record high employment, of rising wages and low interest rates, and those low interest interest rates are making uh, Germans uh, spend rather than save. And of course, some um, low interest rates apply across the Eurozone, and that same thing is making French shoppers reach for their purses. We saw consumer spending in France climb 0.7% in July, offsetting a 0.7% decline in June. And especially gains in furniture and clothing were especially strong, while energy consumption declined. Well, Janelle, we'll continue to look at those uh, bright spots. Let's see you called it. Thank you very much for your time, and um, I hope to see you tomorrow.